Welcome to another edition of How to Survive, the podcast where we discuss movies and how to survive in them. This week's episode is brought to you by Alpha, Beats by Dre, Ben and Jerry's, Brookston, Casio, American Airlines, Converse, Crimson Trance, Dasani, eBay, Google, Nike, EcoGear, Hilton, Chevrolet, IWC, Jamba Juice, Pandora, Jeep, Nissan, Jimmy Fallon, <laughs> Dave and Buster's, Starbucks, Kawasaki, Margaritaville, Oakley, Mercedes Benz, Nikon, Tostitos, Triumph, Coca Cola, and Pepsi, Samsung, Sunrio, and Verizon. So, of course, we've spared no expense. It's the Jurassic World How to Survive podcast. I feel like you're making a point about the uh, film there in your intro there. Too. Well, that's for the listeners to decide, yes. <laughs> I'm sure we'll discuss uh, any commercial points later on. Mm-hmm. But, um, of course, this week is Jurassic World, the 2015 movie directed by Colin Trevorrow. Trevorrow? 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 Tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, well, I think. Who knows? Who knows what his name is? It doesn't matter. Uh, ultimately, it's a Spielberg production. Uh, in all, for all intents and purposes, I think. Yeah, we're not here for the director. No, though. we are here to discuss. When, when, when they announced the new Jurassic Park film, yeah, no one was going. Oh, he's, he's director. Or maybe they were because he wanted to be Spielberg. But yeah, what I mean is it, the absence of Spielberg is more remarkable than who it was. Yes. Like, I, I, the only no- reason I know is because I had to look it up for this podcast. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, I have no idea who he is. I don't know anyone. I don't know if I've not seen. I'm not familiar with Colin Trevorrow's work, yeah, so he's, he's I don't know if yeah. like I don't know if people would see Jurassic World and go, ah, oh, this is a classic, classic Col- Trevorrow, Trevorrow film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's got all the hallmarks. Yeah. Um, oh, Jurassic World, Jurassic World. Uh, maybe be- okay. As as ever, um, we we'll start spoilers. with spoilers. Brief, yeah, yeah. Spoilers. spoilers. We're, we're going to spoil it. So if you haven't seen Jurassic World, go and see it now. Then come back, and we'll we'll make more sense to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to discuss how to survive. Yeah. But first, best to recap the plot. Mm-hmm. Now, we've been blessed in the last few weeks in terms of plot. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. F- so Friday the 13th is, um, there's a killer loose at the campsite. Yeah, try and survive. Yeah. Uh, it follows is, if you have sex with someone, you get a curse and try and survive. Try and survive, yeah. Uh, last week was Alien, which is, there's an alien loose on the ship, try and survive. Yeah. Now this week... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's best I start with describing Yeah, no, please. So, so it starts with two boys mm-hmm. who are heading to meet their aunt at Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Um, she's the successor to John Hammond, mm-hmm. uh, the, the failed owner of the previous attempts to yeah. start. She's not the owner, she's the director. She's the director, the, yeah. She, the she's not the CEO. She but runs she, the park. Exactly. Um, so this Jurassic World has reopened as Jurassic World mm-hmm. on the site of Jurassic Park, which you will remember from... Uh, Jurassic the, Park. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so the aunt is then revealed to us to be a sh- strong-headed, highly strung businesswoman. Mm-hmm. No nonsense. She meets the boys, and after an icy reception, uh, she departs to visit the new asset, which is what they call dinosaurs. Asset. Asset. Yes. Yeah, for, from a business perspective, it's mm-hmm. how they make their money. She goes with the, the CEO, who's played by Irfan Khan mm-hmm. from The Life of Pi. Mm-hmm. The asset is revealed to be the Indominus Rex, and it is super smart. Yeah. We need to be wary of it because it's going to be trouble. You can tell from, from the off. It's a genetic hybrid yeah. of dinosaurs. Exactly. Yeah. A mishmash of dinosaurs. And it's unstable. Yeah. It's, it's tried to break out through the, the reinforced glass. Uh-huh. Um, but we're told there's only one person in the world who can control it. Yeah. Luckily, he's on the island. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's Chris Pratt, or Owen, uh, yeah. played by Chris Pratt, yeah. who in his first scene is shown to be a, the master of a, a group, a troop of velociraptors. Mm-hmm. And we're shown a scene of him basically giving them commands. They follow him like sort of dogs. But then a shady Navy man uh, steps out. He's kind of re- there to research mm-hmm. velociraptors. He's Hoskins, played by Vincent D'Onofrio. Okay. Who you may recognise, Chris, yeah. as Private Pyle from Full Metal Jacket. Really? Yeah, really. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's good to find out that he... Not he only went survived. On to have a career. Yeah, he survived that um, yeah. rifle shot to the head. Yeah, and is now a Navy man. A Navy, Navy, Navy yeah. he, he, well, so the gist of it is, he wants to use the Raptors 
as a living weapons, weapon. yeah. right? And yeah. and Chris Pratt, Man of the Earth, says no them. way. That sets that's pretty. You know, it sets up sets the the pieces are in play. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So Chris Pratt is taken to visit the Indominus Rex. Mm-hmm. He, he discussed it with how they're treating it. He said, "This isn't how you socialize an animal." Yeah. In the meantime, it's revealed he had a date with the main female character, Claire, mm-hmm. and. Oh, Already, this is. <laughs> there's so many things to keep track so of. So dense. Okay. Yeah. So, so he, that, he so starts spouting stuff about socialising it, but then all of a sudden they can't find it in its enclosure. Yeah. Uh, we're using their thermal sensors, mm-hmm. so they assume it has escaped. So Pratt and two security guards go in. Yeah. Uh, long and story it's short. Tricking them. Yeah. It, it kills escapes. two of them. Gets out. So it's, it's super smart. It tricked them. Yeah. Meanwhile, she's radioed through to headquarters to say it's on the loose. Mm-hmm. Now, while all that's happening, yeah. the two boys are making their way around the island, visiting yeah. the attractions, mm-hmm. including the Mosasaurus. That is the giant whale-like thing right. that eats the great white shark in the trailer, yeah. which I'm sorry. Big giant water monster, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, in time, they escape the chaperone, mm-hmm. and they go off into unsecured territory. Yeah. Eventually coming face to face with the Indominus Rex itself. By going off route off, off when, uh, when in a mm-hmm. weird sort of hamster ball yep. contraption sponsored by Jimmy Fallon. Yes, that was, yeah. that was quite weird. But yeah. that's not the weirdest part of this movie. <laughs> so there's only about half an hour dedicated to them escaping and yep. exploring the island. While yep. They find the old Jurassic Park Yeah, with building. lots of, lots of nods nice to the film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is all nice stuff. Yeah. Apparently they went into a lot of detail on that sort of stuff as yeah. well. It's pretty cool. Like, I, I enjoyed it. You know, I'm, I'm a casual Jurassic Park fan. I haven't yeah. seen it for a few years, but it, you know, I it's, recognised it and it's cool. Yeah. It's a nice touch. It's good to keep that sort of um, consistency, I suppose. Yeah. And they, they get back to the main... They eventually escape to the main... Area. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in the meantime, the Chris Pratt and Claire are looking for them. Yeah. They come across all sorts of uh, beasts and mm-hmm. the stuff you'd find on Jurassic World. Sure. Meanwhile, the Indominus Rex is moving closer to the yeah, thousands of people. And their apart. attempts at containing it fail you pretty spectacularly. Yeah. So while all that's happening, while the Indominus is closing, they receive radio transmission at the Velociraptor cage, and the Navy guy, uh, without blinking, picks up his phone and says, I think I spotted an opportunity to put a plan I just came up with into action. Mm-hmm. Now, by degrees, we, in the film, we find out what that plan is, but I'll tell you now, it's to use the Velociraptor to... The Velociraptors to... To demo them in the field, yes. basically. But, he, but at this point, he doesn't know what's on the loose. It could be a, a pterodactyl. But it doesn't matter to him, does it? No, just, he's, he's oh, just so to, crazed yeah. with because, blood Because, like, what is, what is stopping him from doing it anyway? I guess there's the... Chris the, Pratt. If, Chris, if Chris Pratt and Pratt. The, the other guy, yeah. the, the other trainer. But then, yeah... It's confusing. <laughs> so long story short, they, they try and stop the Indominus using the raptors because the guy gets his way. Um, but it turns out the Indominus is part raptor. <laughs> shock of shocks. Oh no. And it convinces the other raptors to attack the humans because we all know lizards can talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so begins another chase. At some point, the CEO of the park takes it upon himself to fly a helicopter to try and in- shoot the Indominus. Yeah. But in, in so doing, he releases a thousand pterodactyls into the atmosphere. Because he crashes into an atrium. Yeah, he dies. That pretty much went as badly as it could have been yeah. for him. But after the pterodactyls have all cleared, after about another 20 minutes, yeah. um, the raptors switch their allegiance back to Chris Pratt, yeah. leading to a final fight scene between, not Chris Pratt and the Indominus, but yeah. the Indominus... That would be, be silly, Joe. Yeah, the Indominus and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, which is released as a sort of... Fuck it, let's yeah. try this. Yep, yep. Um, the T Rex looks well beaten, but it pushes the Indominus towards the tank of the Mosasaurus, which then eats the Indominus in one gulp. There's always a bigger fish. Yeah. As That's a Clive very Bondin good summary. Says. There's a lot of plot threads. There are. It's considerably longer to explain than the film <laughs> yeah. itself. It is, yeah. I mean, this, this kind of leads me to the point I want to start with. Which is right. that this feels like a film that was designed by a committee. Right. You get the sense that there's about five different films that are trying to compete for the One main plot. plot. Right. Yeah. So you end up with the the guy trying to make the biological weapons, mm-hmm. the kind of love story between Chris Pratt and the, the Lady Claire. Claire. Yeah. Um, the, the brotherhood story. 
the story of the Indominus itself. Yeah, the Navy SEAL story. Yeah. The boss, uh, the owner of the park sort of has a story. Yeah. There's Nerdy Guy, played by Jake Johnson. Oh, yeah, uh, he's, he's going to fail to love affair with the, the, yeah, the, the other lady. Girl. Yeah. But I mean, you, you do end up with a lot of... I mean, those are kind of yeah. entertained and they have a conclusion. But there are several things that are suggested and then never mentioned again, such as the elder brother, the opening scene, says his girlfriend says to him, I love you, I'm going to miss you. And he ignores her. He says, I'm yeah. So you think, oh, he'll, he'll find retribution in terms yeah. of saying, I love you. Yeah. No, doesn't. The elder yeah. brother then leers at girls whilst at the park. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, he'll learn to disrespect women. No. no. They're never mentioned again. Yeah. Uh, there's the younger brother's frantic concern that his parents are going to get divorced. Yeah. Which isn't mentioned up to that point. So you think yeah. maybe they're introduced. Yeah. Never mentioned again. Never mentioned again. They dedicate a, good, a couple of minutes to that scene. Yeah. And then there's the, the animals combined to make the Indominus. Which the big reveal is, oh, it was it was wrapped all along. But to me, that seemed like they weren't going down that route, and that's kind of something they came up with at the end. Yeah. It seemed to me that they were building towards it being part human, which would explain its intelligence. And I know I'm not the only person to think that. My girlfriend said it as well mm -hmm. when we watched it. But the, even the final line of the movie, which is, she, like, the, the Claire yeah. says to Chris Pratt, "What should we do now?" And he says, knowingly, "I think we should stick together for survival." That, that seems like it's supposed to be a throwback to <laughs> yeah. something else in the film. It's a but throwback to a line that doesn't exist. Exactly, yeah. Or, or a concept of, the, the, I mean, yeah, the Velociraptors like are pack guys, animals. Guys, we've got to stick together to yeah. survive. But that's like never... Velociraptors, they stick together to survive. Yeah. And Chris Pratt loves Velociraptors. Right, and he mentions okay. it every time. Guys, we need to be like the Velociraptors. Yeah, we need to stick together to for survival. survival. Yeah. Hey, hey, well, hold on. Don't, don't split up. We should stick together for survival. Yeah. Leading to the, the end where he says, do you know what we should do? We yeah. stick together for survival. Nod, wink, credits. Yeah. No, yeah. never mentioned. It's just out of nowhere. Yeah. And it just feels like indicative of something that was just thrown together. Yeah. So I, I actually the first time I saw the film, I really enjoyed it, mm. and I saw it in the cinema, and it just felt like a brilliant like blockbuster film. Yeah. I think like watching it with a mind to do something like this is probably like yeah, it I, I got it's it. not it's not to the benefit of the film, is it? Like it's it's a bit unfortunate to pick it apart like that because it's mm. not really it doesn't stand up to close inspection. No, I, I think. I, uh, I so fine. I have been ridiculing it, but yeah. I did the first time. I did enjoy it. I came away saying that was a very enjoyable film. Mm -hmm. um, it has its weaknesses, but it's only on the second watch round for this the purposes of what we're doing here. Yeah, yeah. That it did fall to pieces exactly. in a big way. But I think I th there are lots of things that I like about it. Okay. Uh, like you know, there's lots of things like uh, there's a whole discussion near the start. Oh, we need to. You know, people aren't impressed by seeing a dinosaur anymore. It needs to be bigger and louder, more teeth. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. And it's like I like all that sort of double meaning. Like, uh, it's like the film, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Like they're not impressed. Back when Jurassic Park launched, both the film and the park, that was like amazing to people. But now, twenty years down the line, people don't care about CGI. People don't care about dinosaurs in the world. That's like a nice mirroring yeah. thing. And I really like how Jurassic World is realised as a theme park. Yeah, like, right. It's, it's it's fun to just see all the attractions and like. Uh, like tour around it all the tech is really like it seems like something that would be there in like yeah. a state of the art theme park uh, like you mentioned all the product placement in the film mm -hmm. it's funny like as, a, as an audience member I was like oh this is funny because obviously like if you go to a theme park everything yeah sponsored. and that's in fact acclaimed director Colin Trevorrow <laughs> the, the guy behind the film yeah. has um, he said the product placement wasn't in there at the behest of the studio but he wanted to include it to satirise the corporation, co the, the corporatization, the corporatization of popular entertainment, which I think is a convenient excuse. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure he's counting his stacks of money yeah, that he got exactly, from Starbucks, yeah. thinking, well, we'll see, "Oh, yeah. I, sh I showed those guys." Yeah, yeah, I showed up, them up. For yeah, being the corporate <laughs> those mugs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really like Jake Johnson's hipster nerd character, okay. and like the whole. Uh, the Jurassic Park t-shirt. Park t-shirt. I think that's just like a nice, it's a mm. fun touch, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know, you can imagine probably a lot of audience members feeling yeah. a reflection. Well, he, he's kind of, of of an age of us. Of, exactly. Of an age with us. So yeah. he, he so would he have, have been, been growing, growing up with Jurassic, yeah. Jurassic Park, the park, yeah. opening and really enjoying it and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's cool. And I do love how the T-Rex comes out of like retirement yeah. to say they. That's just like, it's such a, like wish fulfillment type thing. The, the villain, go. the villain of the original film, comes back and is the hero of this one. Yeah, it's such a sort of like, oh god, wouldn't it be great to see these two big dinosaurs fighting? Right, and then yeah. they do. It's just like such a silly, like 
It's really in the spirit of that sort of blockbuster yes. sort of thing. Yes. So, yeah, a few weird things about okay. the film, though. Uh, with the whole controlling the Raptors thing, mm. they there's this, like, dialogue the way through the film. You know how you said they, like, seed little themes and then don't come back to them? Right, yeah. Right. The controlling the Raptors thing, there's a load of conversations near the start, right, about... Oh, they're animals, right? The phrase, they're animals, gets used so many times, right? And it's it seems to be used in the context of, they're animals, they'll do just weird, mad shit. Whatever they animals, want. Like, yeah. like when the dinosaurs escape their pen, and it's like, yeah. oh, they're so annoying. But they're animals, what do you expect, right? Yes. You can't control them like assets. And then the next scene is like the raptors, and it's like, oh, they're animals. So, like, you can train them because they're animals. Right. So those, those things jar, and like, you know, so the raptors can take orders, and then they can't because they're more to their raptor, you know, instinct, because yeah. of the big raptor, right? And then they decide not to be like that, again, seemingly mm. on a whim, right? Well, they realise they're the true... Yeah. But they, it's not even their true friend, he's the master, the alpha. Yeah, exactly, but like, there seems this whole constant turn and throwing on whether they're thinking animal is like a animals are smart mm. or animals are like stupid they'll just do weird shit because they're animals yeah like and just walking out of their area because they don't understand or you can train animals really <laughs> well because they're really smart and intelligent you can get to hunt like pack dinosaurs yeah but they're animals so they're just gonna <laughs> like go after the big animal that leads them but hang on they're animals so they can remember <laughs> Chris Pratt is their owner but we had to protect them as well because yeah, exactly. they're animals yeah and then they're going to fight other animals why doesn't the T-Rex just eat the rest of the people and he kills yeah. the thing that's, that's a good point because for the first three movies <laughs> the T-Rex is an unstoppable killing machine yeah it kills like <laughs> without it, it kills indiscriminately it kills children or tries it kills it, yeah, it, it just smashes lays waste to loads of people yeah. San Francisco yeah it's so dinosaurs, dinosaurs yeah. are animals. They're animals. They, they're not smart. But at the end, the, the T-Rex sort of stands up and he's like, oh, my job here is yeah, done. It's like he's going, it's like he's going, well, that's like, yeah. it's like, it's like at some point in the film, there was an uneasy bond developed between the T-Rex <laughs> and the humans. But again, it's just like, it's just like, yeah. it just happens because that's what's written down in the script, basically. Yeah, exactly. There's no reason for the T-Rex to not like continue to... Yeah, it's just been, it's blood's up, yeah. it's just killed, it'll kill again. Yeah. Does it know about the massive uh, no, monster? It, this is my point, right? right? This is a point I want to make. Yeah. The, the, the in, Indominus, Rex. Yeah. Is what it's called? Yeah. The, the Indominus Rex. The Indominus Rex is able to influence the raptors because it is part, part raptor. raptor. It's also part Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah. So why doesn't it say, <laughs> hold on, Tyrannosaurus Rex, yeah. you and me are brethren. Yeah. Let's just kill... But raptors are supposed to be smarter. Yeah, they, they right? have bigger brains. Yeah. Right? Than T-Rex, mm. right? So T-Rex is more of an animal. So it's not as smart. So why doesn't it just kill the people as well? Yeah, that's the thing. There's no and does it intentionally lead it over to the big water monster? I, I think it's... Here's my question about the big water monster. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. What is it called? Uh, the mo the m Mosasaurus. Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus. Or Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus. Mm. Here's my question about the Mosasaurus. Okay. By the way, if, if any listeners are paleontologists... Please get in touch. Yeah, do, do correct desperate. us. Correct us on our yeah, pronunciation. Exactly, yeah. uh, how to survive show at gmail dot com. Yeah. So the T Rex is he leading him over there? Is it like oh, if I get him near there, the the, the most because that's stepping. that's very smart. Mm. If that's what he's doing, but he's not smart. No, no, he's, he's, he's got a peanut animal. brain. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so I just that's back the thing. And they, forth they about kind like, of oh, whether what their stance is on. They kind of treat the Tyrannosaurus as Hannibal Lecter. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, so they, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the only thing that can outsmart yeah. this in th this killing it's machine is another thing. killing machine. Yeah. Who then at the end it just goes, well, there you go. I've, I've helped you. Uh, yeah, exactly. So you, in turn, you let me go free. But no, it, no, it's not even that yeah. though, is it? Mm. It's just bizarre. It's just such a bizarre. Uh, the older child, he's just a lecherous arsehole, isn't he? Yeah. He's just horrible. He's a horrible. He's, got, piece of he's work. a totally unredeeming yeah. character. And the the other child. It's a wet fish. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's annoying. It's like, uh, you think, um, again, that you, you think when character traits like that are established at the start of the film, you assume the payoff is going to be they either correct their ways mm. or they 
don't and they get punished for it, right? Yeah. Uh, none, neither of those things happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the same instead, people. Yeah. Instead, the aide who's won a uh, crime is letting her eye off children, yeah. which is admittedly like he had one job, right? Yeah, yeah. But her murder is <laughs> so <laughs> horrible. I thought that would have made it an 18. She gets picked up by, a, what is it, pterodactyl? A, 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 strictly speaking, Chris, they are pterosaurs. Pterosaur. She yeah. gets picked up by a pterosaur, flung about between pterosaurs in yeah. the air, and then dropped in the giant lake. With, so, with the Mosasaurus. With the Mosasaurus. She then tries to swim out, gets picked up by a diving pterosaur again, mm. who is like toying with her. Yeah, dumping right? her back in dumping the water. Dumping her back, in, back and forth in the water. She's like drowning. This is all like in close up yeah. as well. We've had like screaming, like, ah! like <laughs> I'm dying, like yeah. pretty harrowing. Yeah. And then she gets eaten in alive. One gulp. Yeah, in one gulp. Mm. So presumably, if the 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 crushing blow of the mosasaurus jaws didn't doesn't kill her. kill her. She drowned, yeah, like inside in stomach acid. Yeah, and her one crime is not looking after the yes, pissy I, children. I, I didn't feel like she was enough of a. If if the if uh, Hoskins had died in that yeah, way, yeah, you'd yeah, be yeah. like, oh, it's the villain. That's his payoff. He's like he, messing with things that he doesn't understand. Right? He, he dies off camera. Yeah, he gets his hand bitten. Yeah, and, and then it, the rest of it takes place yeah off camera. Yeah, right, because that's too brutal. But <laughs> it's too that's violent. The thing. To she, she she didn't do anything wrong. She wasn't a necessarily decessible character. Yeah, like at, at worst she'd have a hand bitten off. Yeah, but she. She's like, it's, it's, I think, it's, it's I think what we're saying top. is she didn't deserve to die in such no. a heinous manner. Not in in real life, and not in the, the sort of sense of the the film's plot. It just didn't fit. But again, another indication that it was. Um, I mean, it, the, the script, I know this for a fact, it was written in three weeks. That tells you everything you need to know, probably. I mean, I still enjoyed the film when I first saw it. That's oh, yeah, thing, I know, right? but it's, it comes to pieces, doesn't it? Mm. That's why we're here. Yeah. Does the film survive? That's the question. Well. Wow. I've actually got um, a leaked script from Jurassic World 2. Okay. Um, That's good. I'll just read to you from that. Yeah, no, can I, um, uh, yeah, yeah, can you, I have you, a copy yeah, of it? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, we yeah, can, we can do roles, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to be the um, it's internal courtroom. Okay. Uh, I'm the lawyer. Yeah, and I'll be I'll be Claire. Okay. okay, so she's back in there. She's back in. Yeah, she's back. Okay. So you mean to tell me, Claire, that you didn't evacuate the park when you found out the Indominus was missing? Mm-hmm. And you didn't evacuate the park when you found out that it had killed two people? Uh, I no no I didn't no. And you didn't uh, when you found out when you found out it killed ten mercenaries? You didn't evacuate the park. Uh, there were the extenuating circumstances, but no. When, I mean, when Chris Pratt, uh, Owen. Mm, yeah, Chris, yeah, um, uh, Owen. He's yeah. over there mm. in the courtroom with us. Yeah. He, he said to evacuate the island repeatedly. Yes. You didn't do that? Uh, no. Um, uh, no, I, uh, my, I wanted to protect the dinosaurs. Even after the other dinosaurs were dead? Yes, even, yeah. And there were, I mean, at one point there were 1,000 pterosaurs on the loose, and that's when people started dying. Um, yeah, uh, in in my defence, uh, the actions of Mr. Masrani at the time were not <laughs> my decision. Uh, but you didn't evacuate the park. No, I, no. Yeah. No further questions. Yeah. Um, well, I think. Yeah. I mean, basically, I, the movie. It's the only page of the script we have. Yes. Yeah, like, it's, it's a class action lawsuit from mm-hmm. the victims of the uh, the corporate bad decisions. So let's move on to how on earth. We would survive in Jurassic World. In Jurassic World. So we'll start as we always do by asking the question, mm-hmm. who was the first to die? And it was the Indominus Rex security guard slash paddock keeper. Yeah. Uh, there, there was one, it, I mean, everyone remembers the fat guy. But it was, there was one before that who yeah. was not even Not even given the screen shown, time. Yeah. yeah. His legs were shown being thrown down the Indominus' mouth. But we, I mean, we can kind of count him out, I think. he was. Yeah, it's not his fault, is it? So maybe we should look at the fat security guard. Right, yeah. He doesn't make much of an effort to run, uh, other than to hide behind the car, mm-hmm. which when the car is thrown out of the way, he just sort of sits there, frozen in the headlights until he too is eaten. Mm. How would you have done something <laughs> differently? Would you have run? Uh, yeah, mm. kept running. Do you know what I did in that situation? What? Doused myself in petrol. That's what 
Owen does. Yeah, Chris Pratt. Famously. I mean, this is uh, one thing that, when we're talking about How to Survive, um, the first note I've got mm. is Chris Pratt does everything right. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> so he's basically... A man's man. The Bear grills of Jurassic mm. World. I mean, it's very easy to get dragged into that trap, Chris, of thinking that he, he made all the right decisions. Everyone thinks Chris Pratt makes all the right decisions, but it's his idea to go into the cage when they can't find the Indominus. All he's got to do is go, oh, control room. Can you check the tracker on uh, the Indominus? Oh, it's still in there. Well, we won't go in there then, and uh, <laughs> the events of the film will be yeah. avoided. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. So um, the, the entire thing, it falls at Chris Pratt's feet. That's, th yeah, that's a good point. I may have to scribble out uh, how to survive B Chris Pratt. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, okay. When we're talking about ways we would survive, a lot of people just die, not many main characters die, it's a lot of just sort of faceless customers and things like that. Mm. Um, but I mean like the main ones are like kids put themselves in a lot of danger, Owen yeah. puts himself in a lot of danger, yeah. and then customers and generally. Yes. So maybe like thinking about it from the kids' perspective, what would you have done differently? Well, don't be dicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't be, the kids in this film, the like typical idiots. We've already talked about how yeah. one is basically wet behind the ears and the other one is just it's just an awful person yeah. like a lecturing mm. like a lechy sort of horrible leering yeah, yeah. creep basically yeah who then goes oh let's go we've got I'll tell you what as well um so you're Claire mm. you're going right uh, my nephews are coming mm. to Jurassic World yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get in the wristbands that uh, allow them to skip queues and also override any security function yeah. on the rides well, exactly the so point. that they can just roam if, freely if you were two kids in a safari park just in mm. not in that world in this world would you go off piece to, to look for lions if you're idiots mm. I don't yeah. think, I think like, I don't, I, you'd have to be very stupid don't be stupid is a is a yeah. Solution to the, their problem. They put their problem is of their own making. Yeah. Because yeah. if they'd stayed on track, they would go, gone around. They would have been grouped with the other customers. They may have then found themselves in trouble later on, you know, alongside all of the rest of the customers. Mm. But more or less, they'd probably be all right. There'd yes. be people looking after them at least. Safety they wouldn't numbers, be. Yeah. They wouldn't be scrabbling around <laughs> in the jungle fl like floor, yeah. mm. trying to survive. It's a good point. And you know, I have a question. You know how we discussed the It Follows monster a few weeks ago mm. as being one of his intentions, not uh, other than being to kill the person, is to scare them. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Indominus has that trait? <laughs> yeah. Because it kind of picks them up. It could have crushed them to death, but it sort of shakes them around a bit. Yeah. It likes the chase. Lives for the chase. Mm, maybe. Interesting. But they're not, sm they're not smart. Or are they smart? Who knows? This one is smart. With the Indominus? Yeah. Mm. Is, it, is scaring people a smart characteristic? The smartest animal in the world. Still not as smart as a person. Yeah. Which leads me to believe that they were setting up for this thing for human, human, right. human, human brain. Like, do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean, yeah. No, that's, that's a fair, hmm. fair assumption, I feel. Um, now, we touched on this earlier. Mm. When they're in the control room and it's all going wrong, the special forces team have been killed, right? Mm. From that point onwards, keeping it quiet is in no way in their interest, no, no. in their best interest as a company. For the CEO or the director of the company, you know, Claire or um, Maserani, mm. neither of them stands to gain by keeping by it quiet. Put, putting people at risk. Yeah, exactly. The, less, he, less, he, he makes the point, he says, if we close now, we'll never reopen. That's not true. Specious reasoning yeah. on his part, because they'll just say, oh, the dinosaur got out, but we got it. It's yeah. fine. Come back. Imagine a zoo. Like a baboon escaping yeah. from its cage or whatever in the zoo. And just leave it just, just keep it, like, let's not don't tell, don't tell anyone, anyone. Right? And let's hope that we get it yeah. back before anyone gets their face ripped off. In the age imagine, of a smartphone. Imagine when Everyone there's thought. that horrendous Alton Towers roller coaster crash. Right, right. If they'd just gone don't, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. And pretend that nothing happened. Yeah. No! Alton Towers would never do that. No, no. Jurassic World would never do that. No one in the right mind would do that. It's about right. how you act in that situation. Yeah, because also, it makes it sound like, oh, you know, we just managed to convince people that Jurassic Park was a good idea, you know, these dinosaurs are really dangerous, mm. but we finally managed to convince... It's been open for 20 years. Yeah. There's no one who's going... Like, it's, it makes it out that, you know, dinosaurs aren't, like, a big deal anymore. So there's no reason to think that dinosaurs are, like considered like a dinosaur safari park is considered like an 
a dangerous place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, there's no indication of that at all. So there's no way that it's in their best interest to just go. Keep that under your hand. Yeah, mm. exactly. So mm. it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Mm. And the, people would have more faith in you if you solve the situation as quickly as possible. Yeah. By whatever means, fewer people in would order, find out. In order to sense. keep people safe, mm. right? Rather than just going, maybe this will just work itself out. So you're you're approaching this from the angle of not just. Uh, personal survival, but corporate survival. Yeah, well, yeah. like I'm surviving on the behalf of everyone who dies from this <laughs> yeah. point in the film onwards. Yeah, literally hundreds, if not thousands, of people. Yeah, and there's no, you're right. There's no there's no reason for them to not have evacuated the park as soon as possible. Do you think yeah. you're Mathrani in this situation? Okay, you have two options. One yeah. is to close the park immediately, evacuate everyone, get everyone off the island, even if it's just onto boats offshore. Yeah, yeah, just, or whatever. So, yeah, just, just so. safety. Mm. Yeah. Option two, get in your helicopter that you're not even qualified to fly, to fly a security team. I mean, why do they not have their own helicopter pilot? Right, yeah. Who's like but trained the, For some reason, this helicopter situation. has a Gatling gun attached to it. Well, if they've got that equipment, they must have someone to fly it that's not yeah. the CEO and owner of the entire operation. Right, exactly. Right. But Anyone. Anyone. No, get in the helicopter, pop your sunglasses on, yeah. fly it straight into the atrium, <laughs> releasing thousands of... Ter- pterosaurs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the worst decision that anyone makes in this film. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> in terms of loss of life associated with a single action, yeah. him getting in the helicopter... <laughs> is the worst yeah. idea. The illest advised. Yeah. The last point I want to make is about the, the naval man. Uh, you Hoskins. Hoskins. Mm-hmm. Private Pyle. Yeah. His plan is ridiculous. <laughs> right. So if you take it back from the very inception of that plan, yeah. which was to pull someone out of the Navy to go and train the Velociraptors mm-hmm. so that they could then be used for weapons. Does he have a qualification with working with animals? Really? Well, Chris Pratt. Yeah. Because he's, he's the person they choose in the Navy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's the thing. He might just have an affinity to them. But why not, in that situation, pick someone where you can go, we're going to send you to Jurassic World because we want to train the Velociraptors <laughs> to be yeah. weapons. And they'll go, okay, or no, I don't want to do that. Hmm. In this case, they've waited until the m- worst possible time. The eve of their yeah. plan coming to fruition. So, by the way, Chris Pratt, who has the final decision for some reason. But that's a sub-header in his overall plan, isn't it? Because he's trying to actually get the embryos from the scientist. Are, are those the embryos for the... Well, they may be for something else. Yeah, right? which was Jurassic Park... Jurassic World 2. Jurassic World 3 after the, the, the class action lawsuit comes to Yeah, that, exactly, yeah. 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 The, the next one's a courtroom drama. Yeah. We've established that. And then Jurassic World 3 will see the... Or maybe they just drop it like they do so many other plots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just not, not mentioned ever exactly. again. But yeah, like it's a, it's a confused plan, to say the least. Yeah. So that's the overarching plan. Mm-hmm. The smaller plan, which is the one sort of contained within the film, yeah. is that as soon as he hears... An opportunity. Yeah, it, well, I've got it written down, the exact phrasing. Mm-hmm. He hears the words, acid out of containment, which to him can mean anything. It could be a pterodactyl is out of containment, a mm. budgie is out of containment, but he immediately picks up his phone and without dialing any numbers, <laughs> says, we might have an opportunity here. Yeah. And, the, okay, at this point, the Indominus is on the loose. And there's only four miles for it to go to the park. And we know it's heading to the park because someone says every time it kills, it moves further south towards the park. Yeah. There's only four miles. And it walks relatively quickly. I've, I've read at one point it goes up to 40 you miles just an assume, hour. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it would have been at the park fairly quickly. Even allowing for within, this... Within, like, half an hour. But before it gets there, he's managed to mobilise... Uh, what can only be described as a small army yeah. on, on the beach. It, what, what's weird but why is that... But why are they there if not to kill the animal? <laughs> what's odd is that um, the, when the, you see the shot of the Navy SEALs like flying in on the helicopter and, he kills and, it, and yeah. it kills a pterosaur. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a shot that you would get in a film where they want, you to, they want to make you hate the Navy SEALs. Yeah. It's like, a, oh, look at their like, wanton waste of... Cruel, like cruel murder of an animal. But seconds before, the terrorists were villains. Yeah, and yeah. They, they are villains. Yeah. And he's doing his job. 
Yeah, it's like it's like they would in a in another film it would be like a cow or something, and it's flying over like a farmer's <laughs> land, and there's like a cow, and he like guns down the cow just because like yeah, because I'm a dick, yeah. right? And they like look at each other like yeah, yeah, smug like oh you you, you showed show. yeah. yeah yeah, he's doing his job. But I assume that they were brought in in some way to help the guy's plan, which was the to use the velociraptors thing. in yeah. the field. Mm-hmm. But then none of them are used. One van is used. So the velociraptors stop the Indominus mm. and they, they corner it as, as per the plan. Yeah. And they've got laser guided weapons Guns pointed at his yeah. head, head. And that's about as far as his plan goes. It, is just, it doesn't seem to be any... They don't just kill it immediately. You Why think, don't you just yeah. blow it up with like a rocket or something? Well, it does survive that nearby rocket hit. It gets knocked off its feet. You see, ahead. like, how many helicopters arrive in Well, I don't, want to get, I don't want to get too ahead of us, Chris, because that is part of my how to survive okay. um, All right, um, plan. Let's go, let's hear so it. So, yeah, I think kind of sets up neatly to my how to survive, which is shoot it a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I did some research into projectiles and stuff <laughs> yeah. for this. And okay. I, I mean, it's very hard when you're listening to visualize facts and figures and data. But then I thought, well, you don't need to. Shoot I it. Mean, just shoot it. It's a physical... Even if, even if it's... I mean, Hardy. In this yeah. scenario, okay. In a scenario where its chest cavity is full of muscle and it's got a small heart, or its brain is very small and it's got a very muscular head, you might not make a lethal shot, but you're not, you're going to bring it down. No. And just keep shooting it until it's mush. It's, I, d- I don't believe that, like, a tank wouldn't, like, blow its head up. Yeah. Or several <laughs> rockets. Just everyone. Yeah. Those, there's 25 plus people there with... Assault rifles. Just open fire. Yeah. Just, just don't just stop don't, shooting. Yeah, don't not shoot it. Certainly. Yeah. That was, if, you, if you've got so much petrol, you can cover yourself in it. Yeah. Cover it in petrol. Fire bombs. Yeah. Drop stuff on Napalm. it. Napalm. Yeah. Projectiles. Anything. Like when they're in fact when they once they've evacu- evacuated the park, there's no vested interest in them keeping the park intact, is no, there? No, we can rebuild. That's it. all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's all expendable. Yeah. It's uh, it's frankly ridiculous. I have one final survival scenario. Okay. Uh, if you are a customer, I've written it down here, please follow safety instructions given out by staff to the letter in order to survive. Uh, drop the cocktails. Oh, the margarita guy. Yeah. Yeah, very good, very good. I love that. The, the guy's he's just carrying his, two his margaritas. His big concern is his margaritas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, every hell is breaking loose around him. But if you're a customer there, uh, follow their safety advice mm-hmm. and it seems to work out pretty well for you unless you're yeah. one of the unlucky ones who gets attacked by a terrorist hall. There's not a lot that staff can do about that though, to be fair. Um, but yeah, just get into a safe environment mm-hmm. and everything will be fine, probably. True, it's a good point about the safety stuff, actually. I think they could have done better. Yeah. Uh, well, well they, they, they announce seek shelter and no one really does anything until the things actually arrive. True, but there's, there's seconds. But what I mean is, in general, if I was to go in and do a have a safety check for the place. I'd say, well, the only guy you've got guarding the most dangerous animal is a man who is literally staring at a brick wall that isn't the wrong way. Like, he's, yeah. he's looking in the opposite direction to what he should be, yeah. eating donuts. <laughs> the only guy you've got on him. Yeah. Security is lax. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other guy, who's like the, the only other staff member we really see, is the guy who's helping them onto the, the gyroscope pods. Mm-hmm. And he's basically stoned. He's like, yeah, it's, nice it's like a Saturday job. Yeah. A Saturday job on an island that presumably doesn't really have like a civilization there yeah. outside of just the park. So he must have gone there for that job. Yeah. And as Does he goes there daily on the ferry. He gets called. Um, yeah, yeah, he gets the, called. And and he's he, like, oh, what? Seriously? Code like, 19. And yeah. he op- opens a manual. He says, don't worry, everyone. I like, surely if there's one code that you would memorize. It's it the one on the, the dinosaur on the loose. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Violent asset out of containment. So th- there's another way you can survive. Yeah. Don't have feckless stuff. My last uh, house survive scenario. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't make evil monologues mm. like Hoskins. Yeah, it kind of was the... It's just his speech, basically. I mean, he it's sets himself it's, up. It's full of just <laughs> rubbish, isn't it, this <laughs> film? <laughs> Uh, I do I'm like speak, it though. it's enjoyable of, rubbish speaking it? of tropes that don't work yeah right? the, you got that one of him giving his monologue and saying, oh, it was me all along yeah alright you know, you know there is that thing in films where if you had a gun trained on me I'd put down my weapon to show yeah yeah I'm on your side buddy yeah there's this I'm not joking right? there's this scene where Chris Pratt is cornered by his own velociraptors at the end and he puts down his gun yeah as though they're as gonna a, know yeah they're gonna go oh wait he's 
Oh, but they're smart, Joe. He they're also animals. He should have fired it in the air, scattered at them. They're animals, Joe, so they, they don't know what a gun is, but they are smart. Shoot them. But they are smart animals. Shoot them. <laughs> and you've got a gun. Shoot the other thing as well. So, uh, any letters, Joe? Uh, the first... We've got, we've got some survival letters, uh, emails in to our email address, howtosurviveshow at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. The first one comes from Hannah, um, our Hello, regular Hannah. correspondent. She says, basically, evacuate much, much sooner, uh, which we've, we've, we've we covered. She says, ignored the maimed Diplodocus. Yeah. Because there's a scene where they're looking for the missing children, and yet they stop <laughs> and sort of tend to a dying Diplodocus. Yeah. And in, uh, that's bad on... A, a pacing sense. I, I don't care about CGI dinosaurs, Chris. Well, it's, it's Since Disney's like dinosaur, a callback that hasn't to bothered the me. sick dinosaur in Jurassic Park, isn't it? Yeah, it's so what though. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's. I guess. I guess it's kind of a cool visual if you compare it to that because mm. with Jurassic Park you have the reveal of the herd, yeah, and that's quite cool. With this, it's a similar reveal, but they're all dead. So you're you're saying from a in the George Lucas defense of it rhymes. It's like poetry. It is like poetry. It does rhyme, yeah. but it makes no fucking sense. Right. The other thing Hanno adds is, don't hang around watching the action on your iPad, which is uh, <laughs> what Claire does when. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just, and then the guy shows up and he's been like, <gasps> he's got blood all over him. Yeah, Help yeah. me! Yeah. Mm. Why not drive off? Drive away. Yeah. Drive to safety. Yeah. Uh, Tom has emailed in. The uh, our frequent correspondent Tom has emailed in. Yeah. Friend of the uh, show. Yeah, he says, uh, in Jurassic World, I'd probably use my mobile phone to call or email any manner of emergency services or news agencies. Hmm? There's no suggestion that anyone doesn't do that, but it's a good good tip. Yeah, I think communication's key. That would have solved the Chris Pratt problem at the beginning. Just call, call headquarters and say, is, is the Indominus in its cage? Yep. Oh. Hmm. And secondly, he sa- well, and to add to that, he says, anyone that might turn up with... Uh, uh, some form of flight boat related rescue mm-hmm. will obviously be able to help. He says alternatively find a cupboard somewhere and lock the door. Yeah. Sensible. It's not interested in the, the small kills. No. It it's wants. Not. Yeah. Yeah. One final letter. Mm-hmm. Oh. This comes from Mike. It says firstly, activate all the taser chips in the dinos. I quote, all species are fitted with taser chips. And that only leaves the Indominus Rex who's pulled out. Yeah. It's own tracker thing. Right. Yeah. So then starve him out and wait for him to eat another dino. And then zap the belly of the beast. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So wait till it eats the thing the tracker. Okay. Oh, he adds, Oh, and where's stilettos? So I can make it through the dense jungle. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a very good point. <laughs> yeah. No, so okay. That's, that's quite I like that. Maybe you could wait until you have it's eaten five or six dinosaurs, yeah, yeah, including it's really their trackers, and then activate them all simultaneously, <laughs> yeah. and it just explodes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good idea, though. I like yeah, it. good I one, like Mike. It very much. Thanks, Mike. And if you do have any suggestions of how to survive in Jurassic World or indeed any of the films we've talked about, then do please email in. That is how to survive show at gmail dot com. We we'll look forward to hearing from you, and we we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. So, until next time, thanks for listening. Uh, In the meantime, what do you think we should do, Joe? I think we should stick together for survival.